Welcome Couch Co-opers to another video from Couch Co-op Coop. I hope you're all doing well. Five more PS4. We do actually have six on this video. I'll explain that nearer the time. We're looking at brief encounters. It's not called brief encounters, it's called brief battles. I personally think the first name's better anyway. It's a, mm, I wanna say Smash Brothers clone, but it's not, there's a bit more to it than that. It's slightly more platform focused. It does have some single player content, but the single player content is not available on the two player mode and I'm testing this on four player I will do but what you can see is basically a closed room battle game where we're jumping around we've got certain power ups they're to do with pants and different types of pants giving you different types of perks and the buttons are pretty simple there's a jump there's a slam and there's a double jump and wall running and stuff so there's quite a lot to take on board with navigating this little guy are getting exactly what you're seeing with this game. A closed arena, some of them have traps at the bottom, they all have portals going either way in. Straight off the bat, I will say, this is so much better with more people. I could imagine, you know, that's why I'm really keen to do the four player test. And it's 11 pounds, so it's not gonna break the bank. And it's, it's relatively varied in regards to different power up types and what they do and of course different map types there's loads of different map types and they're actually beautiful you know look at the designs of the backdrops the blurredness on that parallax there in the water it's not half fast at all and for 11 pounds and if you've got four people and you you kind of love that smash brothers jumping around and trying to kill each other setup there's loads of it here <laughs> There's no real changes on the character that you choose in regards to different like jumping stats or stuff like that. And when I went into this game before having the couch co-op test, I looked at the single player content and you can add AI or where there is AI little monsters and stuff. Yeah, I stopped myself there because I started going up at the end of sentences like an annoying person all of a sudden. <laughs> anyway, the single player content is actually quite good, but it's not accessible for two people. They do add in AI little bots and things. There's quite a lot there, but it's fifth on the list for a reason. And of course, of course, I straight off the top of my head can think of a game called Towerfall Ascension, which is really so much better with its single player content, with its design of the levels, with its variety of levels, the amount of content and the amount of fun you can have with four people like co-op and versus, there's loads of it. So if you're kind of interested in this setup and you've never heard of Towerfall Ascension, that's probably cheaper, not available, available physical though, Michael, but it's definitely worth a look, definitely, you know, that's probably the answer to that conundrum. There was no conundrum coup. Okay, bloody hell, I do not want to get you all excited, but I don't know if you know that I've been on a lifelong quest to find a mashed clone, which is basically this Micro Machines uh, genre game that we had on the PlayStation 2 that involved four cars or two or three or whatever, going hell bent around this track and getting each other off the screen and then having a crosshair, which is a, a gun that you can shoot at the people who were still playing. Do you know what I mean? If you get knocked off, then you can start meddling around with the race. Party Crashers is that clone. I can't believe it. So this is one of the list tickers for me when it comes to cool game types on the PlayStation 4 for Couch Co-op. A decent MASH clone was one we didn't have. Oh my God, we've got it. Shawnee, we've got it. It's proper mental. Seymour, you've now got to get a PlayStation 4 because of this. Now, this is one of the two. This is a pack. It's 18 quid, 19 quid, and it comes with a, another game with it. So this studio have done us a brilliant deal. So this one is called Party Crashers. And another thing is it comes with more than one race mode. Did you see those four? This is the actual race. The first one's elimination. This is the race. It goes full split screen. Gives you a full-blown split screen mode with this cool neon stuff. Just to add to the weirdness, it's not available on the UAE store. So some of you guys might not know, I've got two profiles and I've got a UAE one still and this is not there on the store. I have a UK new new UK account that new 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 that I use for you know content that's not on the UAE page. And this is one of the games I, I, could, I had to download it through 
the UK PSM, which is weird. I don't know why they wouldn't have that on there. But uh, by the by, here's the third. Here's the third mode, which we all remember a game like this on our Commodores or on our Spectrums totally delivers on the top down. The, I think you can add power-ups to it. There were complaints that it, this was a bit of a mundane mode. But I loved this mode. I loved this mode. You've got a break and you can throttle Feather to get a bit of leeway around the corners. It's really detailed, the physics. I know it looks like nothing, but this with four people, think about it guys, holy moly. So the, the fourth mode is just a trapped arena. Do you remember the headache I had with the remake of Micro Machines a couple of years ago? This was the only mode that they gave us. This is just a fourth of what this, no, a quarter, sorry, of what this game is offering as a package. And it's one of two games and it's 19 bloody quid. And I love this neon design. I just hit the table, got excited. So. Uh, yeah, uh, but I preferred the elimination mode, which was the one you saw at the beginning. I like, I kind of like the sort of stop star little bouts because it's so hectic, because so much goes wrong so quickly, it's cool to have these little restarts. called uh, Giant Margarita by the way, someone needs to go and pat these guys on the back. So this is the next one in the pack. Now I heard about this on Twitch. I think I've heard about another game which is under a different name that looks similar, I'm not sure. I think this format's been sort of bootlegged a number of times. But this is certainly not the original version of it. But we've all seen it before, it's the classic golf game side-scrolling setup. But for some reason they've They've added so many game types and the physics is so easily comprehensible and the access of four people is such a no-brainer and the AI is really good as well that this is such a compliment to the previous game. It's, you really don't need much if you don't own any couch co-op games and you have an audience that a is one side into gaming and fast crazy stuff but or b a sort of slightly more sober and adult and wants to think about things you've got everything in with these two games it's stunning can't stress that enough You're timed to get the ball in the hole and you're timed quite strictly. And also you can be affected by the other players. You can actually get knocked out of the air. You can actually be quite tactical and ruin people's plans. And it's so funny when someone is right next to the hole and you think I've lost it and they overshoot. And if you overshoot and go off the screen, you're back at zero. So hilarities ensue, obviously. Now look at these map types and look at these game modes. I think this is probably well over a hundred different combinations. And look at the map that featured there, it was enclosed, it was almost like a cave where it wasn't just that flat platform. I was spoiled for choice here and I think this is where the game's longevity comes into its own. We, we, we just could, we had so much to go through to test. We, this one was one that looked pretty cool and it was the asteroids or explosive mines set up. Then obviously you start going for crazy shapes and we went with bananas and the physics and the rolling and how awkward you are and, and how you get in the way of everyone and all the hilarious innuendos that, I mean, it is just so good. And, and I was blown away by the fact that this was on one single purchasable package. So it, there's party crashes and party golf out there now on the UK, European, probably the US store. So snap it up, it's bloody awesome. So this is relatively new and actually relatively expensive. We, the next bunch of games aren't cheap. This one comes in at $30 or 24 quid. Okay, so it came out, I think it, maybe last month or this month, Next Up Hero. And it's a roguelike ARPG. So already I'm extremely interested. You can see that this art style is stunning and it 
it's got so much effort behind it with the different characters. It's playing on this ancient hero summoning setup and the game is always online. It's always talking to the servers because I think these silhouettes of individuals that are on the ground are other players that have died in the level and then you then summon them and have them as abilities to use. So they're not controlled by a human, they're kind of like Neo Automata did it. So that's an interesting aspect. Of course this is full blown two player. It may even be more than that, forgive me I haven't tested it, but I want to be clear I'm really impressed with it and I'm really impressed with the different characters. You're only going to see two character types being played here but they are vastly different and the guy that I am is that little dude with the remote control and he has a dummy uh, and the other character has an airborne drop. Did you see that? So I had to stop <laughs> what I was doing. Did you see that? Oh my god. Yeah, I was, I didn't know. So I got really into this on, on the one player. I got really into it because it's got this really clever progression system that's the same as Darksiders Genesis where enemy types drop these tokens and then you pump them into an upgrade system that then gives you that power to use as a hotkey. It's been done before loads, but it seems to be quite a popular mode at the moment. And these tokens are really addictive in getting them. And there's also a sort of lead, universal leaderboard thing going on as well with the uh, uh, online capabilities. Oh, sorry, back to that intelligent split. I got so far down on the one player that it didn't occur to my mind that if someone else was coming in game, that it would introduce that. So I was noticeably taken aback massively. I was so impressed with that. I'm not impressed with the big pause when the other person joins and there isn't like a lobby screen where the couch co-op person would access. You have to go in then push an options button and then they join and you actually have to select their character whilst the other person's playing. It's all a bit higgledy piggledy but you know it's there and it works and it runs beautifully. Have a look at the little animations on the explosions and the dying animations on each enemy it has very much a Pokemon, early Pokemon art style but I love it to bits. Next up Hero and it's very new as well. This should have been on my action RPG list that I came out with about a month ago but it wasn't actually released. Here is that enemy list, Like, look at the amount of enemy types and all their different perks that they offer me and how far down the line I am with getting their tokens and also you can increase a single move strength with getting more tokens and increasing the buff on that so I'm so impressed with it it a big surprise for me as well I often scour the store for new releases and this was obviously not under the fucking couch co-op option because there isn't one, but this was under the new releases. And I'm also getting a bit friendlier with the recommended stuff. It, the algorithm seems to be recommending me games on the store a bit better. If you're a developer or a couch co-op game maker, then you need to email me immediately and make sure you send me codes or access rights or give me a heads up on what you're releasing because Sony isn't doing it. And uh, I want you guys to make sure your games are seen. So uh, get involved. I always hit us with a repeat, the swine. That's right, I have only 700 people looked at the actual review of this game that I did in depth. So it's Streets of Rage 4. It is the sequel to a very famous trilogy of games that came out on the older system. Side scrolling, beat em up. This game directly competes with stuff like River City Girls, which you should know from the channel. This is probably better than River City Girls. That breaks my heart to say that. But if you were playing River City Girls, and you'd be like, oh my God, this is, this is like Streets of Rage. And then Streets of Rage comes out and it's like, yeah, Streets of Rage is blatantly better. But I don't want to take anything away from that game. It's, it's got its own strengths, but Streets of Rage 4, Man, the quality, the precision, the beauty of it all. It's a hell of a thing not to break, cash in, or ruin, or elongate a sequel like this, you know, or even hand it over to a studio that was going to ruin it. 
it was everything was done correctly executed correctly even the release was nice and loud everyone knew about it and it's really great to talk about this game with a generation that had nothing to do with its prequels and it, you see a lot of youtubers discovering it for the first time even at the genre itself the whole side-scrolling beat-em-up is a surprisingly enjoyable genre if there's two people the communication needs to be high with this game there is a little bit of knockback if you start swinging and not thinking yeah i really love it streets of rage 4 is an absolute triumph and i, I said in the review that Q1 and Q2 of this year are, are actually not too bad for us couch co-opers. What with the Darksiders brand new IP with Genesis and this, this is a blatant nod to us couch co-opers and it offers three player. That's a very, very good addition and something I've not tested. I can imagine things getting so awesome uh, with three people going crazy on this screen. Value-wise, it's also very good. There's a massive amount of content for the single player, and I'm playing this through on the single player first. It's I did that with the originals, and it's geared up for that as well. You know, it's not one of those games that you have a dulled experience if you're not enjoying it with someone else. It's brilliant, and the bosses are hilarious. I love the idea of how they change and mix their attack patterns up. It has one foot in the past, squarely, but has another in the ease of life, quality of life features in the future, so absolutely fantastic game. And there's one more game coming up, you little beauty. So if you ever sat me down and said, what is your favorite, what, what would you want as your favorite game? I'd say a side-scrolling Dead Cells clone with guns that's two player. That is what Fury Unleashed is. Yep, just let that settle in people. It's a side scrolling roguelike that's two player and got a guns go and cannelloni style shooting mechanic with the other analog stick. You also play as ginger identical twins. You don't, I just haven't bothered with the two player customization, but look at this shit guys, oh my God. It's absolutely flawless. Five years in the making, I've been reading up about it, and the guys, they added a lot in its final stages. They've obviously played all of these awesome indie roguelikes. You've got a map select screen that's a bit like sort of ditto. There's a lot of Metroidvania in regards to getting to different areas, but the play style mimics a lot of the modern roguelikes with on the fly pickups and buffs and you do runs on each level. You notice that there was that comic book set up at the beginning, I'll show you that in a second. This is the jungle level, and all of the enemies feature that amazing theme. And it re-rolls all bosses and mid-boss encounters, and it proceeds generates all of these box rooms that you saw existing in that map. Got a story that's centered around either a struggling artist or a budding artist, that, or someone who's retrospectively looking at their work. And Fury Unleashed was obviously one of their characters, and you collect ink, and there's this just this weird stuff with the illustrator going on with this black and white scenes etc so there's some substance with story there but fuck that story when you've got on the on the fly pickups the shooting mechanics that sound these enemy designs the trapped room scenarios a slow down when you take damage oh there's so much No friendly fire, thank God, and there's a dash button on, on the R keys. And the dash is ridiculous, like you go so fast and you can cover a gap and you can instigate it mid-jump. So the platforming is top notch and it recognizes that, giving you trapped arenas where you have certain tasks that involve absolute bullet hell precision, getting around and getting in and surviving. I love this game so much. Look at this skill tree. So uh, there's a load of moves going on at the bottom there. You can see I've got to increase my heart and there's drop frequency increase. And that skill tree carries over to the other person that joins your game. Very important. Look at all of these unlocks. Risk of rain level of unlocks and stacks and new stuff to discover. And it does the same thing with all of the enemy and boss types. So I've got my mid-level boss screen. I haven't even seen a main boss yet. I, I, I am knee deep in this game at the moment. There's nothing else getting played in my gaff.
When I was talking about the second player and that unlock screen, what I meant was that they have their own, so they need to rank that up. They need a account, not to go online to save the data on, because it's not attacked on two player. You're a full blown uh, role playing character, just like the main player. So what a game, what a great surprise as well. This one retailing at around 30, so one of the newest and most expensive on the list. But look at the comics. Oh my God, there's a Nazi one. Yeah, and there looks like an alien hive one. Oh, content, content, content everywhere. Absolutely brilliant. 10 out of 10, Fury Unleashed. As always, headphone users beware. <laughs>